This is 1.2, day two, talking about displaying quantitative data with graphs. And in particular, we're going to talk about histograms. And if you're not familiar with those, you can think of them kind of as being continuous or just a touching bar graph. So histograms are for quantitative data. And you can think of them as just being like a bar graph that's squeezed together with a number line underneath it. Uh, so definitely quantitative data only. So the, the, the frequency table here, uh, it has data on the percent of residents from each state who were born outside of the US. So we're going to organize these into a histogram. And it says the class, how we classify each state, so 0 to 5 percent, or 5 to 10 percent, 10 to 15 percent, and again, these are the residents born outside the US. Those are going to represent our bin widths. So notice they all have a length of 5. And a bin is just, think of like the width of the bar for our histogram. So each bar has a width of 5. And count here, well, that's another word for frequency. So it should be no surprise that adds up to 50. We have each state represented within each of these bins. Now, there's 20 just in the first bin alone. Only 0 to 5 percent of the residents um, are from outside the US. So let's put this data set into a histogram. Let's start with a couple axes here. And then for the x-axis, looks like we should scale that up to 30, and we can count by fives. So I'm going to start by just putting 15 smack dab in the middle there. And then I'm going to make the tick marks for each level of five. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. So I've got my bins here. Each bin width is 5. That's where my bars are going to go. Then on the y-axis, we have our frequency. And the biggest one looks like it's 20. So I'll go up here to 20, and then I'll be able to just cut that right in half. That's 10. And then 5 and 15 after I cut it in half again. So easy way to measure out your axes and make your tick marks. Put the biggest one down, and then cut it in half and then cut those in half again. All right, so let's make our first bar here. It looks like that's the one that goes all the way up to 20. So from 0 to 5, I guess I'll go ahead and put my 0 down. 0 to 5, there's my first bar for the histogram. And then 5 to 10, we go up to 13. That's my estimate there. And then 10 to 15. We go up to 9, so just below the 10 here. Fifteen to twenty. We only have five states in that category, so frequency would be five. Twenty to twenty-five, we have two states, and then one state in the twenty-five to thirty range. So great histogram here. Makes sense to us, but to someone looking at it, it lacks a lot of context. So let's go ahead and label the axes, starting with the x-axis here. So the 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, that was representative of these percentages. So that's the percent of residents born outside the US. And the y-axis, that was our frequency. So the count or the number of states within each of the bins. I'm going to go ahead and make a title for this graph, too. Now, I'm not going to check for this uh, on a test, and the AP exam isn't going to grade for this. But just to be thorough in this case, let's go ahead and give this one a title. So this is a frequency histogram. It's not relative frequency, right? We didn't use percentages here. We actually used these counts. This is a frequency histogram of states versus the proportion of foreign residents. So this is my title. So not quite as important as giving context to the axes, but it's nice to be thorough in this case. So some interesting questions come up with here. What state is the one that actually is between 25 and 30 percent of its residents being born outside the US? So that might be an interesting question to think about. Which state is that exactly? I don't think it's Illinois. In fact, I'm not exactly sure where Illinois would fall in here, but I don't think it's, it's number one as far as the percent goes. 
Another interesting question. Let's say Illinois has exactly 10% of foreign-born residents. Which bin would it go in? Would it go in this bin or would it go in this bin? So we have to be really careful with that. If we read um, from this section over here, if it's exactly 10%, okay, well, this bin had 5 to less than 10, and this one has 10 to 15. So the 10 is actually included in this bin right here. So if you had exactly 10%, you would have to go in this bin because this one takes everything up to 10, so everything below 10. So just an interesting question. If I was at exactly 10, where would it go? And it would have to be in this bin because this bin doesn't actually include 10, whereas this one does. All right, let's go to the cautions part here. Number one says, don't confuse histograms and bar graphs. So let's keep the type of data straight for each one of these. Bar graphs are for categorical only. Those bars are separated. Histograms, quantitative. They're on a number line. Uh, the bars are squeezed together. Part two says, use percents instead of counts on the vertical axis when comparing distributions with different numbers of observations. And I think we've actually talked about this before. Uh, in the previous example, before this, we used uh, just a frequency histogram. So when would it be appropriate to use a relative frequency histogram? Those are the ones that have percents. And the example I always use is, what if I want to compare the boys' data set to the girls' data set? But maybe I had more boys in the study than I had girls. Then it wouldn't be fair to just compare the counts for each category. So make sure if you have different number of observations when you're comparing two different distributions, you can use the relative frequency histogram to make comparisons. And just to be clear, that's not just boys versus girls. That's when they would have different totals for each one. And number three, just because a graph looks nice, it's not necessarily a meaningful display of data. So it's certainly possible to manipulate a graph to influence the reader. And we've seen examples of, the, examples of that in the past. So even if it looks nice, the actual graph might be constructed poorly. Um, consider the bin width dimensions, right? Those should all be the same. But it would be really misleading if I had the, the widths look the same, but they would represent different widths. So if all of the bars in the histogram are the same width, then ideally the numbers they represent, like 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, that distance is all the same. All right, then we have one awesome NBA example to get to. It says the following table presents the average points scored per game, PPG, for the 30 NBA teams in the 2012 to 2013 regular season. Make a dot plot to display the distribution of points per game. Then use your dot plot to make a histogram of the distribution. So let's first check where the bulls are at, because that's who we care about the most. 93.2, OK, not bad. Not great. That's all right. They were a defensive-minded team that year. And then let's look for maybe the lowest team and the highest team so we can start to get our axes down. So the lowest, I think, uh, 93.2. And the highest, 106.1 is what I'm looking at. So to cover our bases from top to bottom, why don't we go from 92 to 108. And then smack dab in the middle of those two numbers, we could have 100. And let's go ahead and put the other tick marks in here as well. So I cut this in half. I'm at 96, 104. And let's split those up. So now I'm counting by ones from 92 all the way up to 108 here. And I know some of these are decimals. Well, most of them are decimals, but we'll find a way to squeeze them in here on the graph. With our low teams, uh, I know we have 93.2 a couple times. And then I think 94, 
Yeah, 94.1, 94.1, and it helps to go ahead and cross these off. And then 93.4 also. So those are really close together, actually. So 93.2 and 93.4, we consider those are, they're, they're about the same. And when we go to make the histogram, they're going to be in the same bin. Okay, let's keep going down the list here. We got some 94.9s on 94.7. A couple in the 95s, the 96s are taken care of, a couple in the 97s, we're at 98.0, oh. 98s and some change, 100, One hundred two, one hundred three. There we go. One hundred six and one hundred six point one. Beautiful. So even though we had some decimals, we could squeeze them all in here. I know there was a little bit of overlap. That's okay. We're just using this this dot plot uh, to start to be able to create a histogram. So it's really up to us to decide what the bin width should be. How wide. Um, not necessarily the bars on the graph, but how wide of range the bins will be for each one. So I think one point, that's probably too small. For example, there wouldn't be anybody in this bin right here between 104 and 105. Is it possible? Yeah, I suppose. Two points may be okay. For now, I want to look at it in three-point intervals. That way I'm sure to get a few teams at least in each bin. So if I use these, right, I'm, and I'm just drawing these to start to give myself like a visual idea of what the bin width should be. So my bins would be from 93 to 96. So we'll say from 93 up to 96, so any team less than 96. But if you're 96 or bigger, you go in the next one. So from 96 to 99, and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to put dot, 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 because you guys can kind of see that pattern. Every three points here, we have a new bin. And then when we go to make our histogram, we want to know how many teams are in each one of these bins. So if we count the dots in the first bin, uh, looks like we have 11 teams from the 93 to 96. Then count the dots in the next bin. We've got eight teams. And then the higher scoring teams, look in the next bin, we have five teams. And then three teams, and then the last bin, we have three teams also. So it's up to us to decide how wide we want the bins. In this case, I chose to go with uh, three, with the three for each bin. So let's take this and make an actual histogram out of it. So using those bin widths, it looks like we're going to start at 93 and go all the way up to 108. And we can go ahead and use tick marks at every three points. So I'm starting at 93, going all the way to 108. And then I think 11 was the highest number of teams that I had. That's fine. I'll just I'll use 10 to scale it. We can go all the way up to 11. So 10 and 5 on the y-axis here. So my very first bin, the little bar here, is going to go just above the 10. That's my... I had 11 teams that fell in the 93 to 96 range. And then I had 8 teams in the 96 to 99. 5 teams from the 99 to 102. And then I had 3 teams in the final 2 bins here. So now we've got an idea as to the shape of this distribution. Clearly right skewed, which is what you might expect. A few high scoring teams pulling that distribution, the shape of it, to the right. Okay, most common thing to make a mistake on and forget, let's give this thing some context. What are these numbers for? What are these numbers for? Well, on the x-axis, this is average points per game. So that'll suffice for now. I guess I could be even more specific and say for NBA teams in the 2012 to 2013 season. But for now, I'm just going to say average points per game. On the y-axis, that's the number of teams in each category. That was the frequency. In this one, we had 11 teams, 8 teams, 5 teams. So that was the number of teams that fell into 
each one of the categories. Beautiful. So we took our rough looking dot plot with the decimals and we made it into a nice histogram. And the last component for the notes here, Q1, it says why would we prefer a relative frequency histogram to a frequency histogram? Relative frequency, remember that has to do with percents. So percents instead of counts. So anytime you wanted to see percentages of the whole instead of just the counts or the frequency, that's when you would want to go with a relative frequency histogram. So you wouldn't have the number of teams or the counts over here, you would have percentages. So anytime you'd want to see percentages of the whole, and we could have done that for the NBA teams, right? We could have said what percent of teams are in here, what percentage of teams are in here, what percentage of teams are in here. So that's when you should use a relative frequency histogram, when you want to see percent of the whole for each bin. All right, so we've got histograms knocked out, quantitative way, or I should say a way to display quantitative data. That is all for these notes. I'll see you in class.